Good afternoon. And our first item of business this afternoon is a statement by Shirley Ann Somerville on STEM strategy for education and training. The Minister will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Shirley Ann Somerville. Presiding officer, I'm delighted to lay before Parliament today a STEM education training and strategy for Scotland, which focuses on excellence, equity, connection and inspiration. Indeed, only this morning I was privileged, as I have been on a wide range of visits in recent months to science centres, festivals, early year centres, schools, colleges and universities, to see that inspiration in action. I visited the Jimmy Dunnocky Family Learning Centre in Glasgow, which has established a strong STEM preschool curriculum with hands-on activities and exciting topics. And I saw for myself how those activities are capturing the imaginations of the centre's young learners. It was also great to hear about the partnerships the centre has forged with Strathclyde University and with the young STEM ambassadors from local schools, one of whom I had the chance to meet on my visit. Enthusing and engaging children from the earliest years in science, technology, engineering and mathematics is at the heart of the centre's activity. It was an absolute pleasure to see children exploring STEM in all its forms, and this work is key to setting children of all ages, both boys and girls, from a range of backgrounds, on a journey of wonder, to learn, to question, to experiment, to problem solve, to always ask why and what's next. With some estimates suggesting that 65% of preschool children will work in careers and jobs that do not yet exist, their future is truly one of opportunity. We must give them and the children I met in Glasgow today the tools they need to seize it. Presiding officer, this STEM strategy has a clear focus and a strong purpose. Quite simply, to be a nation with ambition, Scotland must become a STEM nation. If we are to realise the ambitions set out in our programme for government, to build a modern, dynamic, open economy which benefits everyone in Scotland, we must support everyone in Scotland to develop their STEM capability and skills. All the sectors which feature in our vision for a high-tech, low-carbon economy have one golden thread. They all require workforces with STEM-related skills to develop and to grow. This strategy has been shaped by extensive discussion and dialogue. It began with a debate here in Parliament, marking the start of the formal consultation exercise. That consultation was available online and included a series of events covering specific interests, such as education leaders, gender equality and business engagement. I also established a short life expert reference group to provide support and challenge in finalising the strategy. This group was co-chaired by Professor Sheila Rowan, the Chief Scientific Advisor for Scotland, who is here in Parliament today, and Professor Ian Hunter from Strathclyde University. I am grateful to them and all the members of the reference group for giving so generously of their time and expertise. The strategy seeks to address four key challenges. The need to ensure that people are encouraged to develop an interest in STEM that is reinforced throughout their lives, to ensure that our education system has the right number of practitioners with the right skills to deliver excellent learning and teaching, to build a system which equips people with the skills that employers need and has the flexibility to respond effectively to change, and to tackle the gender imbalances and other inequalities that exist across STEM education and training. It does so by focusing on four key themes and aims. First, we must build the capacity of the education and training system to deliver excellent STEM learning. Earlier this month, the Deputy First Minister announced a new scheme to provide bursaries for anyone changing career to train as a STEM teacher. From August 2018, 100 bursaries of £20,000 will be available for people giving up an existing career to undertake teacher training in STEM subjects. The initial focus will be on subjects where we are currently experiencing a shortage in teacher training students, physics, mathematics, technical education and computing science. Applicants will be expected to have a relevant degree at a level of 2.1 above or above the suitable subject content. Minimum entry requirements for teacher education courses will of course still apply. But we must also provide appropriate support and professional learning opportunities for teachers and other practitioners. We will create a new network of STEM specialist advisors to work with early years providers and schools to ensure that the sharing of best practice and emerging evidence is at the heart of excellence in STEM learning and teaching. This new network will be operational by December 2018 and advisors will work with the new regional improvement collaboratives being established in partnership with local government as part of our education reforms. To support STEM in learning in schools, we will continue to fund the Scottish Science Education Research Centre and our partnership with the Wood Foundation on the Raising Aspirations in Science Education programme, as well as investing in new resources for practitioners. 
Crucially, this will include support for STEM learning and inspiration in the early years as we expand the early years workforce in Scotland. It is vital that we give everyone the opportunity to fulfil their STEM potential and contribute to Scotland's economic prosperity. So our second aim focuses on closing equity gaps in participation and in attainment in STEM. We will take action to improve the participation of underrepresented groups in STEM learning and to tackle unconscious bias and gender stereotyping that creates barriers to participation, access and attainment. This must start from the earliest years onwards and be sustained right through the education system at all levels. It will include action to tackle gender segregation and promote e equality of opportunity in the early years, apprenticeships, college and university courses. We will work closely with the qualities experts in the third sector to create a dedicated team to embed practice from the successful Institute of Physics Gender Balance Project across all schools by 2022. I've already spoken of the importance of inspiring children, young people and adults to study STEM and to continue their studies to obtain more specialist skills. The current UK STEM Ambassador Programme provides a strong network of action of support for education, but we can do more. We will establish a new Young STEM Leaders programme to stimulate the development of peer mentoring in STEM. This will start in 2018 and be fully operational by 2022. It will focus on children and young people who are currently themselves in education to complement existing STEM ambassadors. Earlier today, I announced funding of £2.65 million pound to support the work and activity of Scotland's four science centres and I am proud that we are the only government in the UK to provide such financial support to science centres. They have a key role to play not only in inspiring STEM in children, young people and adults, but also in ha helping to tackle inequity. We will therefore target our funding to enable the centres and science festivals to further encourage girls in particular, and more generally people from deprived rural and remote communities, to engage in informal STEM learning and experiences. The fourth aim seeks to connect the STEM education training offer with the labour market need, both now and in the future. To increase collaboration and connection, we will create a new STEM hub network to strengthen regional level collaboration between partners, including universities, science centres and employers. This network will focus on building partnerships between secondary schools and colleges in 2018 and broaden out to include primary and early learning settings during 2019. Of course, colleges and universities in Scotland are already taking action to prioritise STEM teaching and courses. Our universities are world leading and at the cutting edge of research and innovation across the spectrum of STEM disciplines. Our colleges increasingly play a central role in coordinating the approach to STEM across their regions and with partners, including businesses and employers, to deliver our aim of increasing modern apprenticeship starts to 30,000. We will build on this solid foundation in three ways. <coughs> We will increase the number of college and university student placements with employers in STEM curriculum areas, increase the number of graduate and post-qualification internships offered with STEM employers, and to complement the approach being taken through developing the Young Workforce Programme to improve careers and guidance from 3 to 18, we will ensure that college and university students have access to the best advice and guidance about STEM careers. But we must also challenge our institutions to go further, faster. We invest in our colleges and universities with confidence, but in an ever more competitive global economy, we must look to them to work with us and partners in industry to ensure that their curricular offer to students and support for researchers remains world-leading and always current. Presiding officer, this STEM education and training strategy for Scotland is deliberately bold and ambitious. It has a five-year lifetime from 2017 until 2022, and delivery starts now. That focus on delivery must be relentless, so we will measure progress and success through key performance indicators. Work on developing these has begun and they will be published by the end of the year. I will also chair an implementation group involving expert external advice to drive forward delivery. That group will produce annual reports on progress and provide these to Parliament. I am confident that through the actions in this strategy, we can unlock the opportunities the future holds for all of Scotland to flourish and thrive and become a STEM nation. Presiding officer, this is not the Scottish Government strategy, nor even that of the Scottish Parliament, though I hope all members and parliamentary groups will support it. It's Scotland's STEM strategy, Scotland's education and training strategy, in which everyone through our education system, across the public, private and third sectors, and within key businesses and industries, has a role to play, and I'm proud to present it to Parliament today.
Thank you. The uh, Minister will now take questions for the next 20 minutes or so. I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak button now. And I call on Liz Smith. Leading officer, uh, can I thank the Minister for prior sight of her statement and broadly welcome the measures that she's announced, although I have to say it should be noted that some of the conclusions and recommendations are exactly the same as those that were contained in the SEAG report uh, five years ago in 2012, which suggests that progress has been painfully slow. I would I li like to ask the Minister a couple of things. Firstly, in 2015, the Royal Society of Chemistry made the call to have specialist science, teacher science teachers in primary schools on the back of evidence that they had collected which suggested that primaries four to seven were the best ages to capture the imagination of young people when it came to science. The Scottish Government rejected that call on grounds of cost, but it has obviously since found money to support bursaries for graduates who might be persuaded into teaching from other professions. Could I ask the Scottish Government if it will now commit to a programme whereby a proportion of that bursary support will go into science specialism in primary schools? And secondly, the Minister is clearly very well aware of recent SQA trends in STEM. She will know that in 20, 2007 there were 50,231 SQA higher entries in STEM and that there was a pleasing increase in numbers to 54,618 in 2013. With the new hires programme, however, the entries for 2016 were only 41,054 and for the same period the number of STEM teachers in secondary schools fell from 6,037 to 5,864. Now, does the Minister accept that notwithstanding recent demographic trends, this reduction in STEM teacher numbers is a serious part of the subject choice issue, which partly explains why insufficient pupils are studying STEM subjects at higher level? Minister. Can I thank Liz Smith for those questions? Um, can I, I, I take it up on, on one point which I would disagree with, and that's the focus on saying that the um, the idea of the best time to inspire young people is between primary four and seven. I was in an early years setting uh, this, uh, this morning uh, with children aged four to five that were utterly engaged and enthused in STEM. And the head teacher there uh, was very, very uh, keen to press upon the fact that we need to start at that stage, not wait until primary four. And that's in many ways because of the research we've shown, particularly for uh, young girls, that say that by the age of seven, they already think what's a boy's subject and what's a girl's sub subject. So I think primary four is actually already too late, and we've lost some young people to that. The point on the specialist uh, STEM uh, teachers, uh, I said in my, my statement that we will invest in a network of specialist STEM advisors uh, that will take uh, um, the, their support and um, share the good practice uh, that happens across Scotland um, into each and every individual school. And again, I saw great examples of that within the work that we've done in partnership with the Wood Foundation of the work that an advisor can bring to a collection of schools. That's why we've went along uh, the, the process that we have. When it comes to the number of uh, young people taking uh, STEM subjects, um, she is right to point out to the fact that the school cohort is falling. Um, S4 to S6 cohort um, between 2010 and 2016 has fallen by 5.6%, and that does in some way explain some of the statistics around STEM. We are seeing 13.4% um, more young people um, passing the full range of STEM hires between 2017 compared to, to 2007. So we're seeing progress, but the point of the strategy is it's not enough. And that's exactly why we're putting in um, to place today uh, the schemes that we are to encourage more young people um, into um, the this, this STEM um, choices. And within Curriculum for Excellence, of course, when we're looking particularly at the senior phase, we do need to look at the senior phase within the, the three years um, and allowing schools to have uh, subject choices and a curriculum that's chosen at a local level, but allows the young people there to have a wide range of, of subject choices available to them. And that includes the sciences. Ian Gray. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister uh, will get no argument from us that Scotland must be, as it historically has been, a STEM nation, so a strategy to achieve this uh, is certainly welcome. The, the question is, is it urgent or bold enough? Uh, Liz Smith is right, since 2007, we've lost over 800 STEM teachers from our schools. And enrolment and pass rates in recent years in STEM subjects have not just fallen at higher level, but at national four and five 
uh, levels too. Meanwhile, STEM teacher training places lie unfilled. In maths alone, universities have filled fewer than half uh, of the available places. Now, we have long argued for bursaries for STEM trainee teachers as an incentive, so those announced are very welcome. But can the minister explain why they are only for career changers? We urgently need new physics, maths and computer science graduates to choose teaching too. They need to be incentivized as well. The truth is though, as long as our teachers are among the poorest paid and most overworked in the world, the profession will not attract the STEM talent that we need. So what will the Scottish Government do to fix teachers' pay and workload and make it an attractive option for all graduates, but especially those in STEM subjects? Minister. Well, as Ian Gray uh, well knows, the teacher pay is negotiated through the Scottish National Committee for Teachers, made up from local government unions and the Scottish Government. Those discussions um, are ongoing. The Scottish Government is playing its part in that process um, and is committed to securing an outcome for that. Um, the Deputy First Minister has said many times his commitment uh, to tackle teacher workload um, and has demonstrated that within um, his time um, in his post, particularly around uh, Nat 4s and Nat 5s. And he talks about teacher recruitment and I'm pleased that he is uh, welcoming the, the bursaries for, for uh, student uh, teachers within these subjects. Um, it is very important um, that we encourage more people into these areas, but that is only one of the actions that the government is taking. We've invested £88 million so that every school can access the right numbers of teachers in this year alone. We're working with local authorities to increase the teacher numbers and do see an additional 253 this year. We're increasing funding and places to our universities to recruit teacher trainers and are teaching new, new ways for, for uh, individuals to get involved within um, teaching. Now, we have seen, um, unfortunately, that some of those places have not been filled. But when the figures are uh, produced at the end of next month, uh, the final figures, uh, we do still hope to see an increase um, in the levels from, from last year. So work is ongoing. And the demonstration that we've made to continue to look at new innovative solutions uh, through the new routes into teaching and the bursaries demonstrates our commitment on this subject. Thank you very much. Uh, we've had opening questions from the front bench. We'll now hopefully make more progress through the rest of the questions. James Dornan to be followed by Oliver Mundell. James Dornan. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, I very much welcome the Minister's statement and the continuing recognition of the importance of STEM and the strategy as laid out. But can the Minister expand further on how she plans to strengthen STEM partnerships between schools, colleges, universities, employers, and encourage things like work-based opportunities for students within STEM curriculum areas? Minister. Well, we're already seeing strengthening partnerships between schools and colleges and employers, increasing those opportunities for young people to take, uh, undertake work placements um, through the World of Work um, and the DYW programme. That's including a growing number of apprenticeships, foundation apprenticeships that already start at school, as well as modern and graduate apprenticeships. We'll build on this, however, through the work that we're doing in the STEM strategy that I discussed around the new network for, for STEM hubs. That's going to be very, very important to link uh, secondary schools and uh, colleges um, in its first instance before broadening out to, to wider collaboration. And it is important we get the different sections of the education system uh, working coherently together uh, to build build inspiration, uh, to build enthusiasm within um, STEM and ensure that more young people not only take STEM within school but then go on to take it within college, university um, or an apprenticeship um, and get involved in the STEM careers. Oliver Mundell to be followed by Jenny Kilruth. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. In February 2017, as part of the Scottish Government strategy to encourage greater uptake in STEM, it recommended that STEM graduates would be able to undertake postgraduate courses at the same time as undertaking the probationary teaching course. Can I therefore ask the Minister how many graduates took up that option in the academic year 2017-18 and what plans the Scottish Government has to extend it? Yes. Well, it is very important that we look at different ways of getting um, individuals into teaching, uh, not just those that are within 
uh, university at the moment and, and doing uh, their first degree, uh, but also the career changers that the that the bursaries um, are, are looking into. Um, I will write to the member with the details of, of the specific numbers, but I think what we're demonstrating within that scheme and the other schemes I'm talking about um, today is our commitment to look at a wide variety of different options to allow people uh, to come into STEM subjects and to STEM uh, uh, teaching uh, from different um, uh, variations. One of the challenges I've heard uh, when I'm going about on my visits is to encourage people on their first degree that may never have thought about taking um, a teaching as a profession. And I've seen some example, um, excellent examples in the University of Glasgow, uh, particularly around computing science of those that are in their first degree moving into STEM teaching, which is a particular uh, challenging area. But I'll write to the member with the specific details he asked for. Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I remind members I'm the PLO for Education. Uh, can the Minister explain how the Scottish Government will support external organisations in linking the STEM strategy to Curriculum for Excellence, particularly with regard to the experiences and outcomes contained in the science curriculum area? Minister. One of the, the great opportunities I think we have uh, within uh, STEM and encouraging um, interaction with STEM is the great deal of goodwill uh, from uh, businesses, from employers in the private sector uh, who want to get involved in what's happening within our schools, colleges and universities, want to bring that expertise and inspiration into the school setting. Uh, the challenge we have perhaps at the moment is there's a plethora um, of great ideas out there. Many of them um, are in the senior phase and those that are already interested in STEM rather than at primary school or even indeed early years. So one of the aspects that the strategy will look at is um, Education Scotland um, will bring all that plethora uh, together, bring it into a, 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 a collaboration where teachers and um, educators uh, can look at what's relevant to the area of curriculum for excellence that they're already uh, or about to teach um, their class and see which project is most beneficial to them. I hope that will bring the best out of what is already in offer, but will encourage more of the private sector, more employers and more businesses to get involved in primary schools and the early year setting in particular. Daniel Johnson to be followed by Claire Adamson. The strategy gives key responsibility to Skills Development Scotland for improving gender equality into STEM careers. Given that last year only 40% of ME starts were women, and that figure has declined since 2012, is it right to put such confidence in SDS? Uh, and, and is she uh, or proud of that track record that SDS has under apprenticeships into STEM? Minister. I think one of the, the, the issues we do have to face up to is that we have challenges with the number of young women that are taking STEM subjects in schools, apprenticeships, um, college courses, university courses. Um, those are, are facts that we, we do have to look at very realistically uh, to, to see how we want to, to tackle them. Um, SDS is, is doing um, a great deal of work, particularly around apprenticeships, uh, to encourage employers um, to, to, to um, see the benefit of taking on only, not only more apprenticeships, but more women apprenticeships, and that work is ongoing. It's a challenge that we're all going to have to face um, all the way through, that we see young women um, um, decreasing in, in their um, interest within STEM as they go on to specialise um, in different areas. SDS will have to face up to this challenge, just like the Scottish Funding Council will have to, um, our universities um, and our colleges, but they're well up for that challenge. Claire Adamson to be followed by Ross Greer. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I um, draw members' attention to my declaration as a board member of CERC and a member of the British Computer Society? Uh, can I ask the Minister whether the Funding Council will review the criteria and routes into teaching for computing graduates that would allow them to teach computing alongside other curriculum areas such as maths or physics, rather than being constrained by the current route of business studies departments within schools? Minister. The entry requirements for initial teacher education are set by the General Teaching Council for Scotland. The provision for uh, the General Teaching Council to award computer graduates provisional registration in dual subjects already exists, providing that the student meets the entry requirements for teacher education, which state that the initial degree should have sufficient content of the subjects that will be taught. From August 2017, further flexibility for dual registration has been created so that probationers who hold or who are working towards a teaching qualification in two subjects can elect to do so their probation year in both subjects 
thereby successfully gaining the standard for full registration in both subjects. This includes combinations of STEM subjects, including computing and math. Ross Greer to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you. In regards to the recently announced bursaries, I previously asked a written question on whether uh, qualification will depend on the industry the individual had worked in and for how long they must have been in the workplace to be eligible. The Deputy First Minister confirmed that eligibility will not be based on the industry and the Ministers confirmed that it will be based on qualification. But could I confirm for how long an individual must have been in the workplace to qualify as a career changer and why the government believes that to be the correct criteria? Minister. Well, I'm more than happy to, um, to speak to Ross Greer um, further about um, his suggestions about how the, the bursary uh, will work and if he has particular um, issues, concerns um, or suggestions um, around uh, particular areas. Uh, we're more than happy to look at that as we progress um, into the detail. The important um, aspect about the scheme is to try and encourage um, more individuals and in from a variety of, of um, STEM industries to bring that STEM experience and that work-life experience uh, directly into the classrooms and if Mr Greer has particular suggestions um, about what would make that scheme more successful I'd be more than happy to work with him on that. Mike Rumbles to be followed by Julian Martin. By what date does the Minister expect that the teacher shortages in STEM subjects will be overcome particularly in the northeast council areas of Aberdeen City and Aberdeenshire? Minister. Well, as I said in my answer to um, other members, the, the Scottish Government is undertaking a, a range um, of different initiatives uh, to deal with the challenges that we have around teacher recruitment, particularly around uh, some STEM areas. The bursaries that I've just spoken to, to Mr Greer about is one of them. If Mr Rumbles would like to take the same positive attitude that Mr Greer is to work with the Government on positive suggestions, I'd be more than happy uh, to hear that. Gillian Martin to be followed by Jamie Halker johnson so as someone who taught a technology subject at FE level up until last year, a warmly welcomed statement on STEM strategy today. The Minister will be aware of the Economy Committee's recent report on the gender pay gap. Can she outline how the STEM strategy will help address closing the gender pay gap, given that STEM sectors are generally better paid than most and are still stubbornly gender segregated? Minister. Well, Gillian Marin Martin raises a, a very important point that we not, not only look at what happens within school and the education system, uh, but what happens um, when young people, particularly young women, uh, take up posts within uh, STEM industries. Scotland's full-time gender pay gap at 6.6% uh, remains below that of the UK and is marginally higher than the year before. We have come um, a long way, however, but not far enough. So Ms Martin should be uh, assured that equality for women is at the heart of the Scottish Government's vision for an equal Scotland and our programme for government obviously contains a number of commitments for progressing including legislating for gender balance on public boards and confirming the full membership of our advisory council on women and girls. We'll continue to keep pro uh, pushing for further progress and taking decisive action to tackle the drivers of the pay gap. While powers over flexible working, including parental leave and pay, are reserved to the UK government, we're doing all we can to ensure flexible working practices by funding, for example, the Family Friendly Working Scotland, which is working to change workplace cultures. And we're also investing in programmes to help women get back into work after a career break, including in relation to STEM. Jamie Halcrow Johnson to be followed by Ben McPherson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, according to uh, Skills Development Scotland, in 2015-2016, only 79 of the 1,458 young people starting engineering and en energy-related modern apprenticeships were female. In 2016-2017, that number had fallen to only 67 of 1,185. That's just over 5% of those young people starting engineering and energy-related modern apprenticeships being female. Can the Minister tell us what real progress she is aiming for over the course of this Parliament in terms of the number of young women starting engineering and energy related modern apprenticeships? Minister. Well, as I've already said in an answer to a previous question, this is something which um, SDS um, is looking at in, in great detail. They have a, a gender action plan uh, that sets out the work that they'll be doing um, within, uh, the, the, um, within their work within apprenticeships. Um, and we're also seeing gender action plans um, for um, the Scottish Funding Council and our universities and colleges to tackle the, 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 the gender gap uh, that they have within some of their STEM subjects. Uh, this is something which... Um, is, is going to be uh, difficult um, 
to, to see progress on, but we do have to see progress. The, the figures that you've pointed um, out today show the absolute, um, um, the, the very wide gap um, in, in the numbers of women and men that are coming forward for apprenticeships. Part of the way that we're also looking to do that is through careers advice um, and the opportunities that are presented uh, to girls when they're still at school, both in terms of their subject choice um, and when they're looking at um, avenues and opportunities um, to take up um, apprenticeships, particularly with engineering, uh, may not be the first thing uh, that will be presented to them and may not also be something um, which other influencers, including um, parents, um, families and other teachers, um, may present to them as a positive option. So we have a, a challenge challenge to take on in inspiring not only young girls to take part but also I think for families and for educators to see the real opportunities uh, that women can have when they take those courses on. That's why the, the work that I talked about around um, careers advice and ensuring that careers advice between 3 and 18 ensures that we're looking at the advice that young women are getting including among the apprenticeship offers that they take within engineering. And finally and briefly Ben McPherson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Like others, I warmly welcome the fact that the strategy sees training and recruiting new STEM teachers as a priority. However, inspiring young people into STEM will also be key. Therefore, can I ask the Minister to say more about the Young STEM Leaders Programme and how that initiative will be taken forward, especially to engage young people from deprived communities? Minister. Well, the Young STEM Leaders uh, Project uh, will work alongside the UK Ambassadors Network uh, for STEM Ambassadors. Uh, one of the aspects which works particularly um, well is when young people inspire other young people to take on STEM opportunities so that they can see someone from their own community, um, of their own gender, of their own background, uh, taking on STEM subjects, um, succeeding in them and seeing the career opportunities afterwards. And I saw that uh, when I was um, in Glasgow this afternoon, the work that uh, this morning, the work I was doing um, between uh, young people at secondary school, inspiring people in a primary school, who are inspiring people within an early year setting, and the work that goes on between university students um, as well. Uh, those, that work has been uh, proven um, to, to see a, a real change in attitude, uh, not with, just among the students, but among uh, teachers as well. And that's why we're looking to make that more systemic across Scotland. Can I thank the Minister and members? And that concludes our statement on STEM. We'll now move to a statement from Eileen Campbell on diet and obesity. We'll just take a few moments to change seats. <laughs>